Okay, we're going to simulate the small signal voltage gain of this amplifier. What I see here, first of all, I'm going to delete my uh, little thing about over there. That's just to uh, scale my uh, figures on the tour book. All right, so here's my input here. My signal source has a 50 ohm output impedance. That source is right up here. We'll see what that's about here in a second. Coupling capacitor, it's very large, and it turns out it's large enough in this case. Input, input goes to the emitter. The collector has a signal going uh, out of the collector, back into the base emitter here. So this is a common base, Q1, it's a common base amplifier. The common base amplifier feeds a emitter follower amplifier or a common collector. Common collector amplifier, here's my output and DC blocking capacitor again. So my input is going to be set up to be, if I edit these parameters, this VS, my amplitude is 1 volt. Circuit lab, be careful, this is a DC, see in the bottom left it says amplitude DC to peak. That's going to be uh, the uh, center line of the sine wave to the top, which would be 1 volt, or 2 volts peak to peak. Sometimes that distinction is uh, important to us, especially when making measurements. Next up, we're going to uh, check that our DC solution is okay. If your DC solution doesn't work, uh, which means if your transistors, both Q1 and Q2, are not in forward active mode, then don't do any other simulation. Uh, it ha You have to get your DC solution correct first. Uh, otherwise, we can't compute a legitimate uh, small signal model. So let's do that. I have part numbers in here. This is just from a uh, homework problem. I'm going to add, let's see, the emitter voltage and the base voltage, this X2 here, and the emitter voltage. And those are all of the internal nodes. We're good, since this is a spice simulation under the hood. Uh, we do need this zero, the circuit zero, uh, for the simulator to go. All right, simulated that. The base of transistor number one is 906 millivolts, 266 millivolts, so uh, 0.64 something volts is the base emitter voltage, the DC version. That's about what we would expect anyway. X node is 5.1, and the emitter node, which is unnamed, is uh, 0.6 lower than that, or 0.64 or something like that, lower than that, and that's exactly what we expect. We notice also that uh, X2, which is the collector, is larger than the base for transistor number one. That puts this transistor in forward active mode. Uh, this transistor number two will always actually be in forward active mode because the collector is pegged at 10 volts and the base was, uh, let's see, 5 volts. So we have plenty of reverse bias between the base collector junction. Base emitter junction was 0.6 uh, something volts. So we're good. Next up, uh, I'm going to do a time domain simulation just so we can see what's, uh, what's going on with this and uh, some practicalities that, that have to happen. We can measure gain uh, very much. We can measure gain with the time domain simulation. This is what we do in the lab. All right, so remember this signal source had uh, one volt peak. This is my model, my small signal model. We'll see that those uh, measurements line up. But right now this is one kilohertz. In my simulation, I'm going to go for, let's say, whoop, look at that, 5 milliseconds. My period was 1 kilohertz. 1 millisecond is 1 period, so this means 5 periods. My time step needs to be uh, many time steps within 1 period. 1 period is 10 or uh, 1 millisecond. And if I do 10 microseconds, that gives me how many? 100 time steps per period. Don't skip the initial, that's, uh, that's something else if we want to add initial conditions and add some expressions here. I'm going to add this one, my input, and I'm going to do the collector, let's see, I'll do X2, and then I'll do our unknown node and OUT2. This might be a little busy, but we'll see what we get.
Oh my goodness. Uh, N2 is blue, and it's this one right here where my mouse is. It goes up and down, but in this region it's really not sine wave anymore. All of our other nodes are square waves with some sort of duty cycle, but really what this means, uh, if you notice that the output goes from negative, well it says negative 3.6, and it goes all the way up to plus 4.5, uh, we're just clipping. This is uh, this might be make an interesting sounding get, uh, guitar pedal uh, because those are supposed to distort. Really, my s input signal is too big. So let's make my input signal much smaller. Go to build mode, edit the parameters. I'm going to drop that by a factor of 10, 100 millivolts, and we'll see what we get. We'll simulate this again. It is still clipping. See how it's not clipping as much? Negative side. It's not symmetric. Uh, but that's okay. So I'm going to drop my input side all the way down because I don't want to... all the way down to one millivolt. Pretty sure that's going to be small enough. And we'll find out shortly. Simulate. Run. Alright, so I see a sine wave on the input, which is the blue color. and It looks like a straight line. It's not and then all these other nodes. This is the base of transistor 2. This is the emitter. Notice how they're always uh, offset by the uppercase V, uppercase BE, the DC value, the base emitter voltage. And then the green one here that's centered around 0. Remember that's on the right side of the output uh, capacitor, so we've cut off this DC. It's the exact same signal as this brown one, uh, but just shifted down with no offset. Because of that I'm going to only show N1 and N2 which will have no DC offsets. Input goes up and down. If you look carefully you see that the input goes up, the output goes up at the same time. That would be a gain that we would call positive or no minus signs in there. And we want to measure the amplitude. I can measure amplitudes by uh, hovering up here making my cursor come down touch this. Over here is a little bit of transient response, we call it, because the capacitors are getting uh, going. Not a good way to say it, but so what I'm really looking at is I'm looking at this peak and this peak, and it says delta Y is 166 millivolts. Remember my delta Y for my input was up 1 millivolt and down 1 millivolt, which would be 2. So 166 divided by 2 is, I don't know my calculator, but it's, uh, what, uh, 80. 83. 83? 83. So a gain of plus 83. Let's do an AC simulation and see if we get the same thing. Circuit Lab, it's called Frequency Domain. My input source is VS. And I'm going to start, let's just start at 10 hertz and go up to... Uh, 100 megahertz and 10 points per decade. We're not going to sweep any parameters. Here's my input voltage and my output voltage. See how this is magnitude and phase and magnitude and phase? I'll leave both up here for a second. We'll see what we get. All right, magnitude and phase. Magnitude is up here. Magnitude is 38.54 dBV, and if we convert that to uh, linear units, we have a calculator, and I'm going to take 10 to the power of 38.5, 38.5 divided by 20, because this is a voltage magnitude, and there's a square in there. It gives us a 20 instead of a 10 for decibels, and I get 84. Remember our other one eyeballed with the cursors was a gain of 83. And we, there we go. And it was a plus. You notice how that the phase in this region is near zero degrees. Uh, there's no phase shift. On the right side we go down because really of transistor effects, internal capacitors. But the left side, we have what looks like a low-pass or a high-pass sort of filter. That's because of our input and output capacitors. Uh, we can take a guess which one it's going to be, but right now that's it's coming from those capacitors. 
So please don't measure your uh, frequency response or your gain for small signal until you get well past this knee, perhaps 10 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz range, where it's nice and flat. We verified what our gain of the circuit is, and that's, boy, that's it. Uh, one more thing to finish off with this, I'm going to take off the phases, because I don't care about those at the moment, and I'm going to take off my uh, input, and here's out one, I'm going to add this expression, Oh my goodness. All right, so V out. And then this picked up a whole bunch of currents through that uh, capacitor and such. So I'm going to delete all of those. I'm just interested in the two magnitudes. If I view this as two amplifiers in cascade, this is my Q1 amplifier. My small signal analysis says its input impedance is about 50 ohms. Output impedance is around 10K. That's not an exact number. An open circuit voltage gain of 200 attached to this one and it's a follower so it has a gain that's near one an output impedance that's very low I think in this case it's actually uh, closer to one ohm maybe I'll change that one ohm alright won't make much of a difference and here so I'm gonna view it my amplifier like this if I get these input output impedances and my uh, uh, voltage control voltage source gains correct or that match my hand calculations, I should get the same. So now I'm going to run my frequency domain simulation. You notice that even when the frequency response is changing, it's not flat, they match up very nicely. And up here we get a gain of 38.24 and 38.54, it looks like. So we got the numbers pretty close, and you notice how this one, the orange one, does not roll off. Well, my small signal model doesn't include any capacitors that uh, change the frequency response at high frequencies, those are actually inside the transistor models. That's how we do it.